Do you have a shovel that's in rough shape? I mean, hopefully not this bad. This particular one here uh, is massively rusted out. It's not been cleaned or maintained in years and it doesn't work very well. Um, it's also not very sharp. Uh, I don't know if that's ever been sharpened. Well, first we're gonna see how well does it do right now. I can tell you it's not very well. Uh, then I'm gonna clean this off, show different ways of cleaning it off, um, and then sharpen it and show different ways of sharpening it. We'll try it again, verify that it's significantly better. Uh, it's easy. It's possible to do it with uh, just hand tools. Um, if you actually have an angle grinder, it's even easier. So let's uh, get started. Here's a demonstration of using the shovel while it's still rusty and before it's been sharpened. I'm not sure how well the video is showing this, but this is actually taking quite a bit of effort just to do a little bit of digging right here. It's absolutely no fun at all. I can feel the shovel just stick as it goes into the earth. And you can also feel it whenever it hits any kind of vegetation, it just stops dead cold. We can do a lot better. Okay, first thing we want to do is clean off the rust. Um, the manual way to do it is typically to use something like sandpaper. So you can have either sandpaper by itself, this is some 60 grit. You can use a sanding block, makes it a little bit easier. We're up to 220 grit at this time. You want to have a little power tools but still sanding. You can use something like a random orbit sander. This has 100 grit on it. Let's give these a try and see what happens. The grit matters a decent bit. In this case, I'm trying to use some 60 grit, which is very coarse, and it doesn't work very well at all on the very fine rust that's on here. Loose sandpaper sheets actually do a really good job of getting into the corners and crevices more than they get the wide areas. Now I've moved to a sanding block with 220 grit sandpaper. This works actually a lot better on the fine grit. And if you have a random orbit sander, you might as well use that since it's going to be a lot faster than using any kind of hand method. No matter how you sand though, it's never going to get the pitted rust or the embedded rust like in the lower right hand corner of that shovel there. Still, if you have a little patience, this is not a bad way to go. So sanding works okay, but if you're going to have power tools, what I really recommend is to use an angle grinder. Specifically an angle grinder with a wire brush on it like this. Uh, you can actually get wire brushes for drills. They don't work quite as fast or they don't rotate as fast as a wire, an angle grinder. So they presumably won't remove rust as fast either. But uh, those will work in, in a pinch. But it, it, it's hard to miss to beat these. I mean, this is what a welder is gonna actually use when treating with uh, metal. Um, and if you can actually remove a weld with this, you're definitely gonna be able to remove some rust. This works much faster than sanding does and also has a benefit of getting into kind of the uh, pitted areas or the embedded areas. It can't get into the deeply recessed areas or the um, extreme edges though. Uh, the, the brush tends to actually follow the edge in those cases. For those, I'll just get out a piece of 220 grit loose sandpaper and just manually sand out the rust. This is using a twisted wire cup brush. Uh, you can also get cup brushes that have the individual strands. Those tend to be a little bit softer and maybe it'd be a little more appropriate in this case, but they also tend to fall apart a lot faster. I wanted the more rugged version of these wire brushes, even if they are a bit more aggressive. All right, now that the bulk of the rust is removed from the shovel, uh, it's time to sharpen it. And yeah, sharpening actually is something you want to do. It's not something they typically will do when you buy it, but it's just one of the first things you should do after you get it. It makes a huge difference in how easy it is to actually use it. Now the first way to sharpen is to use just the standard, uh, typical hand tools, or specifically a file. So this right here is a bastard file. Um, has a rounded edge, which we won't use at all, and then the flat edge, which we do care about. Uh, I believe most type of files would work for sharpening at this level. Um, you definitely want to, don't want to use these for chisels or planes or anything like that, but for garden tools, these work just fine. Um, and yeah, these are actually called bastard files. So if you want to just get a metal file that doesn't really have a name, that's what it really is. This actually does have a direction that needs to go. You can feel it if you kind of run your finger on it. This is a little bit 
sharp feeling, kind of smooth. You can also, if you look very closely, see that all of the blades or all the pieces kind of go in this direction. That means you want to always want to push this file. You never want to saw it because it'll kind of rub away on the metal on it. You push and it will actually grind away at the metal that you're trying to work with. So uh, let's try this first. Put your shovel in a vise with the blade angled up a little bit. Then make a series of firm forward strokes trying to keep the file roughly parallel with the floor. Note how I'm following the curve of the blade as I go. This is called doing a draw stroke. You can see the bevel forming already and indeed you could do the initial bevel entirely using just the file. It'd take you maybe five minutes or so. Uh, metal files do work okay for sharpening. Uh, they absolutely will work, especially if it's already sharp and you just kind of need to touch it up later. And I do use them all the time, even after I go and get the rough sharpening just to kind of finalize it. But to get that rough sharpening, it's hard to beat an angle grinder again. This is the same kind of deal as before, only now we have a metal grinding disc, quarter inch one here. These are actually used by welders to smooth out welds. So they'll remove a significant amount of metal very quickly. You do have to be careful about that, especially when you're sharpening, because you might remove too much metal. Also, if you do go too fast, you can actually remove the temper of the steel itself, make it really soft. So you wanna do kind of light passes and light quick passes. And they will be quick, because this removes a lot of metal very fast. Let's see this in action. As with the file, I'm trying to keep the grinding wheel roughly parallel with the floor. In this particular case, I am doing more of the edge than I need to do, but uh, might as well while I'm at it since it's so quick. Note how I'm not really staying in any one place for too long. That's to keep it from getting too hot. Those sparks are nowhere near as hot as they look though. In fact, I probably don't need to be wearing gloves at all right now. The only truly important safety equipment in this particular case is my safety goggles that I'm wearing. The grinder leaves circular marks on the edge and so I'd like to go over it with the bastard file after I'm done just to smooth everything out. After this, the shovel's not going to be knife sharp or chisel sharp, but it is going to be sharp enough to cut you, so be careful. Okay, now that our shovel has been de-rustified and it's been sharpened, we need to protect it from getting rust again. Um, some people use boiled linseed oil for this. I don't have any of that on hand. Uh, I know other people have used WD-40 with some success. Um, I am not a big fan of that. I think it probably comes off a little bit too easily. Uh, the one I actually use is Rust-Oleum Rust Inhibitor. It's a coverage-based spray, um, and this has worked very well for me in the past. Using it is simple. I just spray on a coat covering all the metal bits and then I go and use a rag to wipe off all of the excess because otherwise that will drip. That rust protection should last a decent bit. And in its sharpened state, this shovel is now actually better than when it was new. That proof's in the pudding though, so let's try some more digging. And I realize this video maybe doesn't show just how big of a difference there is. But let me tell you, in person, it's a night and day difference. This shovel never worked this good, and all it took was 10 minutes of easy work. As a bonus, here's an example of a shovel that looks so bad it should be put in the junkyard, but after following its procedure, it works and looks practically like new. Thanks for watching!